Hello everyone, welcome. It's Thursday Q&A live with me, Phil, here in the Digital DJ Tips studio. Just throwing open our studio to talk DJing with you for, I don't know, half an hour, 45 minutes or something, uh, to help answer your questions, help you move forward in your DJing. That's what it's all about. We are Digital DJ Tips. We are the people behind the number one bestseller, Rock the Dance Floor, on how to DJ. Also behind the Digital DJ Tips School, where we have 25 courses, and about a hundred, well, let me just guessing now. Yeah, we've just tipped over 27,000 students as well. So uh, we are a DJ school, that's what we do. But this is all about just uh, just throwing open our doors and uh, having a bit of an open day and helping you guys and girls out for free, for fun, every Thursday. So that's what this is, that's what we're doing. Welcome to all the regulars who are uh, popping up already to say hello on the broadcast. Hi to Martin and GM and Charlie, Herb and Warfare to Mixmaster G and uh, dark and locked down Holland. Uh, DJ99 says, good timing, I'm having breakfast here. Uh, to Aaron, who says, good day from uh, Rich Lands, Virginia. Uh, to Greg, who's in Florida, lots of people over there stateside today. To Benedict, says, hope you're well, looking forward to another Q&A. DJ Nigel, afternoon all, I thought I'd log on, on Twitch today, says Nigel. So we're on Twitch, we're on Facebook, we should be on Facebook if I remember to switch it over. Let me just double check that. Yep, we're on Twitch, we're on Facebook, we're on Mixcloud, we're on YouTube, so wherever you're watching us, hello, welcome, hi to Funky DJ in Barcelona and Wayne in Chi Town. Stuart, as ever, uh, good to have you here, Stuart. Uh, to Amar, who's in lockdown in Nuremberg, but still alive, well, that's the important thing, isn't it? Hi to Papa D uh, and everyone else who's, uh, who's arriving. Right, questions, that's what this is all about, people. If you enjoy the questions, if you enjoy the answers more than the questions, then please hit the share button, that's all we ask. The first question is from Graham. It says, hi, Phil, I've got a tractor question. Uh, wh when in preparation list, how do you lock the playlist and then add more tracks? When in the preparation list, so this is the tracks at the top, how do you lock it? Well, preparation, I'm not really sure what you're asking, but the preparation list is designed to be really very, very temporary. That's the whole point of it. It's like, if I'm feeling strong, I will do this. It's like, he said, trying to pull something up from below the, uh, below the desk here. It makes great TV when I'm just out of the shot and there's nothing else going on, doesn't it? Right, so the preparation list is like, he said, pulling out an old box of records. Look at this, eh? Here's my old box of records from back in the day. So the preparation list in all DJ software is like doing this. It's like saying, I think I'm going to play that one. I think I'm going to play that one. I think I'm going to play that one and I might play that one. So it's getting your records all pulled out so that you can basically be ready to DJ with only those tunes and not have to worry about all the others for the next few tracks. That, by the way, is Take Me With You by Cosmos, one of the all-time favorites in my box. Uh, so the whole point of a preparation list is it's just temporary. And as soon as you play a track off the preparation list, that list disappears. So if you're trying to make a playlist for any other reason, don't use a preparation list, use another one. So if I've misunderstood what you're asking there, um, please just ask away again. Uh, I'm not proud, I'll try again to answer that question, but that's basically what preparation is, is, is all about. Uh, so hello to, uh, we seem to have either gone live late or lots of you have just uh, lazily said hello because loads and loads of you piling in now and saying hello to Daddy Doe and ask, ask, SQ Squad over there in Canada, to Cadence Music and Steve and The Ruckus, always good to have you here, my friend, uh, to George, uh, to Chris on uh, YouTube, uh, hello to I'm JKKJ on YouTube as well, and Jai Panade, always good to have you here, Zepp, uh, to Seda, uh, says happy holidays, and to you too, to James, he says good stuff as always, uh, Mixmaster G is elaborating on the preparation list question, uh, so Mixmaster G says you cannot lock the preparation list, but you can add tracks from a preparation list to a normal playlist. Yeah, so good thinking. So just grab the tracks if you think, actually that's a good list I've prepared there and drag them into a normal window. That could be a way around that one. Uh, why is the CDJ 3000 labeled a CDJ if it doesn't play CD CDs? It's a very good question. These are the CDJ 3000s. We've got them here in the studio at the moment. We are filming some stuff on them uh, right here, even though they're not actually turned on right now. Uh, why are they called CDJs when they're not really, when they don't play CD, CDs? It's a good point. Um, Pioneer say it's for continuity's sake because these are, to play on these, it really feels just like playing on the old ones, but, but better, right? So it continues the legacy of the CDJs. And that's very important to Pioneer because they are, 
the masters of the DJ booth, right? You go into any DJ booth anywhere in the world, you're likely to find some variation on Pioneer CDs and probably the CDJ 2000s, right? So they wanted the, the lineage, lineage to continue that way. And so that, that's what they told us anyway. I mean, you, no one's to say that CD stands for CD. It could be controller DJ. They're more like controllers than ever these things. Uh, by the way, another reason we've got these out, how would you like to win what you're looking at here? A pair of CDJs and a DJM 900 Nexus 2 mixer. It's worth about $6,000. How would you like to win that? Well, you can. It's the biggest prize in our census prize draw. And all you've got to do is go there, djtips.co slash win. And what you will do is be entered into our census, which we run every year. This is it. The state of DJing today, have your say and enter the census. Uh, that link will take you to this census here. Uh, and then in this page, you'll learn about all the prizes. It's not just the CDJ system. There's actually $35,000 worth of gear from Pioneer, Roland, Allen & Heath, Rain, Denon, uh, Serato, Virtual DJ, Reloop, Tractor, and lots, lots more, all your favorite brands. Uh, and you just click on the link here uh, and it will take you straight to this page here or click on our short code. Um, and uh, you can enter this census. Uh, and then from here, uh, you let us know everything about you and your DJing right now in 2021. It's been a strange year, hasn't it, 2021? And you can tell us how it's been for you, how your income's been affected, how your DJing hobby's been affected, how your gigs have been affected, whether you've been live streaming, what gear you're using, how your outlook for 2021 is looking. We'd love to know. And as a thank you for entering, you could win the Pioneer DJ system here, uh, which is clearly an absolutely awesome prize uh, and, and you could also win one of those hundred other prizes as well so it's a really good thing um, it's been incentivized by the whole industry for you guys and girls because they really want to know what you think and it's 35,000 people entered last year so come and uh, come and join it just uh, go to that url there djtips.co slash win uh, and you can join in the census and have a chance of winning with your free entry to that prize draw right uh, with, with that out of the way uh, let's um Let's move back now to, uh, to your questions, people. Uh, any news about the new Reloop Buddy controller, says uh, someone who's been watching the DJ, Jai Panay, who's been watching the DJ world very, very closely recently. Uh, so the new Reloop Buddy controller, we have indeed got news about it. It is this little thing here. We've written it up on the website. Uh, it's designed for Algorithms DJ software. So it's got actual controls for the stems feature, the neural mix feature that algorithm has included. And as you probably saw on that top picture, you can put your iPad or tablet in the back of it. It works with iOS, Android, Mac, and Windows. Uh, but it's designed clearly to pop a tablet in the back of it. It's tiny, this thing. And if I go to this other picture down here, you see, you can see how small it is there. Um, it's really cute. We haven't got one here yet, but they are pretty cute little things. And as soon as they've got one, that we can borrow, uh, we will review it for you. Uh, so uh, it looks good, but it looks quite pricey to me. It's like $299, I'd say it should be $199, frankly. Uh, but we'll see, we might, it might just turn out to, to feel like a really nice little unit and something that, uh, that people will go for. But anyway, we've got one coming in for review. So when we have that, we will let you know. Um, so someone over on Facebook says, it's been a while, this five days a week work stuff just cuts into your free time like crazy, doesn't it? Well, it's Christmas. In fact, this is the last Thursday Q&A live until January, uh, till January the 7th, I think. Uh, so uh, I will uh, I'll be having, answering a lot of questions on January the 7th, won't I? Uh, but I'm looking forward to this. George says, I still use my vinyl. Yeah, I still use my vinyl. We dig it out every now and then. Uh, any news on Pioneer updating the software to work with the new M1 MacBook Big Saw? No, we haven't, but hold off because they'll probably have it updated at some point soon. Uh, I know that Tractor is going to be ready soon. Their beta is going to be out with the M1 saw, uh, big saw update ready. But um, no, the rule is always hold off on updating your OS until the companies are caught up and they generally take weeks or even months sometimes to catch up. Uh, so Seda says, my iRig stream volume seems to be stuck in blue no matter what volume it is. Is that normal? It could be, right? This is the iRig stream. I've got one here. I'm having to walk around my record box now, which is out on my, uh, on my usual... Uh, pathway around this studio. I'm just trying to dig out an iRig stream to show you guys who might not know what uh, what we're talking about here. Here we go. So this is an iRig stream. 
It's a tiny little audio device that you plug in to your iOS device, your Android device, your Mac or your PC, depending on the leads that they supply. You plug your DJ gear into there and it gets you, it gets you a nice, strong, clean digital signal that you can record or live stream or whatever. And your one is stuck on blue. Is that normal? No, it's not, but there's a weird thing about this. This doesn't like it if you haven't got an app open on the computer or on the device you're recording on that's connected to it. So if you open, like say you're on a Mac, you open QuickTime and you select the iRig in QuickTime. Now these, now, now the lights will work. The blue light basically, when you turn it down too far, it's blue. When, you turn it, when the volume's right, it's green. And when it's high, it's red. So what's that saying? What that is saying is it's not working properly. And these have to be plugged in and switched on with an app running in order to work. So just try opening an app on your system and setting it to the iRig and seeing if that fixes it. it I would call it a bug basically. I've never seen an audio interface that does that before, but that's how they work. So that could, that could solve it for you. Give it a go. Uh, so Cadence Music says, right, it's kind of just a place to put tracks that you might want to play. So yeah, we're talking about the prepare window. By the way, all software has a prepare window, uh, so you don't forget them. I use it when someone requests a song, but I'm uh, waiting for a good time to play it. So cool. Um, so they're claiming that it stands for Club Disc Jockey CDJ, says Colm. Well, there you go. This is back to why these are called CDJs when they haven't got a CD slot in the front of them. It's a fair enough question. Uh, the Rockers says, when I play on my DDJ 1000, uh, I'm getting what can only be described as Q burn distortion. Any idea what it is? I've got no idea. The Rockers is over there on YouTube. If you know what what uh, is being experienced there, go help out over there. Um, so uh, Larry says, what do you know about what's going on with Mixmaster Fusion? Um, Mixmaster Fusion is a piece of software that is owned by InMusic, who own Denon and all that, or, and Newmark and all that lot, but it hasn't been updated properly in years. Uh, and it's kind of a bit like a very, very, very light version of Ableton. It's really for automating your DJ mixes. It's a good little piece of software back in the day, but I don't, I've not heard of any signs of it being updated recently or anything like that. Uh, Lou just says, happy holidays to you and your family from our family in sunny Florida. It's sunny here, actually. Uh, the sun's out. The sun will be down in about half an hour here, but um, the sun's out, so I'm glad it's out where you are. Um, Trainwreck just says, hello, Phil, four minutes late. Uh, so I'm obviously 12 minutes behind in the comments here. It's always the way. We get far too many for me to answer on these calls. Uh, if you're a student, by the way, do get into your student hub Facebook group, your private group just for our students, because um, we do these over there as well called Student Live, and we, we have far more time to spend with you over there. Um, so my wife says, I actually told you about that Cosmos track back in the day. As if I'm going to admit to that. I probably heard it a hundred times by the time you heard it. Uh, yeah, you probably did. Uh, what a tune. You remember playing that on New Year's Eve? About must have been 2000 or something, 1999. They were the days. Uh, so thank you for that, Faye. Uh, so someone on Facebook, wondering how you can stay current with new music. I listen to different radio stations, but there's so much music coming out every day. It's hard to keep up. Uh, let me let you into a little secret about how I stay up with new music. I'm going to share my screen with you here. I might have to do some uh, some swapping and changing in order to make that happen. Uh, let me just uh, pick what I want to share with you here. I want to share Spotify with you. And you can do this on any DJ, sorry, any um, streaming service. So you could use, you know, Tidal or whatever try and get this to fit the screen a bit more so I can uh, show you properly. Right, so this is how I find new music. Fast, fast Eddie, yo-yo, get funky, by the way, tune. Tune and a half from uh, a long time ago. Uh, so this is what I do. Uh, I have the uh, the two big playlists in Spotify, and, and all the systems have similar. Uh, a Discover Weekly and Release Radar. So Discover Weekly is tracks that Spotify think I'm going to like uh, based upon my listening and so on. And the Release Radar is tracks that are brand new this week. From artists, whoop, from artists that I follow. Uh, and what I do is always listen religiously to these two playlists and I click the like button on tracks that I quite like. I don't have to love it, I just like it. And then every week I go down into here and I go into my liked songs and I'll find a list of songs that I've liked and I listen to these songs pretty carefully. And then I decide which ones I want to buy and they go into a list called DJ to get, uh, which is one of my playlists. Uh, so down here in my playlist, there's a, uh, there's a list called DJ to get here. Uh, and these are songs that I'm going to go away and buy this week. 
and then I go and buy those songs and I add them to my collection. I find that because it's Spotify, I can listen to it everywhere. I can listen to it on my phone, I can listen to it in the car, I can listen to it when I'm on the move. And uh, so that makes life really easy for me uh, because um, I'm getting to listen to a whole lot of new music that maybe I wouldn't. Now, it's very important that you do like the stuff that you like. You do click that like button on the stuff you like. You do follow a few playlists and you do like, like albums by, by people you like and so on. Otherwise, it won't know what to put into those lists. All the streaming services will make lists based upon your desires. And my only trick here really is to like the tracks I like very quickly. Oh, I quite like the sound of this. Or what is this like? Or God, that beats a bit fierce. Don't know if I could play that, but I quite like it. Like, do it to all the tracks that you half like as you're listening to music for hours every day or week uh, at work or whatever, and then sit down on a Friday night or whatever and listen through them all and say, do I really want to buy that track? And if you do, move it to a buy list and then head off to Beatport, Track Source or wherever and buy your tunes. Um, I find that I get more than enough new music that way. I probably end up getting 20, about, about 10 tunes a week. I tend to buy about 10 tunes a week. Um, and the, the, the key thing is, is, is using the system to, to make the algorithm really work solidly in your favour. Like the tracks that, 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 that appeal to you. And when you bought the tracks, because I don't really listen to stuff I've bought in Spotify, I listen to that in my DJ software, I put them into another list called DJ Already Bought. Uh, so I'm not deleting them, they're still like, they're still in there in one of my lists. So Spotify knows I'm still into that kind of music. I'm not sure if that helps, but I, I never delete something I like out of Spotify. And don't let your family on Spotify, don't let your kids start playing their music on it. Give them their own account or get a family account. Only you play your music on your logged in Spotify. Uh, so that's how I do it. But if anyone else wants to share tips about, obviously that's one way I get music, but that's the main way I get it nowadays. If anyone else wants to share tips, then please do. And we will, uh, we will read them out. Uh, all right, so the next one is from, uh, from Maya and Ace says, how much do you guys charge? Who are you asking? Uh, I'm not sure what you're asking there. Um, so here's the link to the census one more time from my team, thank you for that. Um, Cadence says, I completed the census yesterday. Stop telling people about it, Phil, so I have a better chance of winning. Uh, yeah, don't keep entering as well, people. We know we'll, we'll, uh, we know if you keep entering. You'll only ever get one, one entry into the draw. Uh, so Frank says, hi. Uh, oh, this is uh, just people talking to Graham who asked about the, about the prepare window. Good to see so many of you all already um, entering the census and so many of you already helping each other out. This is what this is all about. As these go on, as these calls go on, I see more and more of you guys and girls just helping each other out in the comments, and I love to see that. Uh, Michael says, I've got no room in my studio to win that, but if I did, I'd probably find the room. Yeah, you probably would, wouldn't you, Michael? Uh, so, um, Daryl says, evening, Phil. My out, of, uh, my out of office is active for another year. I'm here till Tuesday, probably Tuesday about midday. I might do the Tuesday Tips Live, and then at the end of Tuesday Tips Live, my OOO goes on as well, and I'm back on... Uh, back on Thursday the 7th of January. Nice long break, can't wait for it. Um, so, uh, so yeah, looking forward to that. Um, more questions? Just scrolling them now. Philip says, is, James Hy's is the James Hype course good for absolute beginners and does it take you to pro level? Can you follow it with a DDJ 400? So the James Hype course is not good for absolute beginners. Like if you don't know how to play tracks on your DJ gear, it doesn't teach you that. It assumes that you can play tracks on your DJ gear and that you can get from one track to another. Um, but if you can do that, then it's fine for you. Uh, and it does indeed get you to the pro level as far as James Hype goes. So it will teach you how to, how to, um, how to DJ like James Hype. Uh, so let's go over to the, um, let's go over to the internet and I'll just kind of like show you, show you how this thing works. So James Hype's course is basically, if you like James Hype, it will show you how he does it. So James will talk you through the way he finds his music. It'll, he'll talk you through the way he arranges his playlists. He'll talk you through um, how to do all the little individual tricks that added up, allow him to do the amazing skills that he shows on his live streams and his DJ sets. And then from there, he assembles them all. And then, you know, once you know those skills, he'll show you how to turn them into the actual routines that he plays and teach you up to his very mo his most famous routines, like the one more time, versus losing it and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so it's an awesome course if you want to learn to do skills the way James Hype DJs. Uh, however, um, if you are really not in any way a DJ, you haven't learned anything about DJing, it's too much. You will 
it will move too quickly and it won't teach you all the things you need to know. In that case, get one of our more basic courses, like DJ Made Easy first, and then move up to the Hype course. The Hype course has been our, I think I'm right in saying, our joint best course, best-selling course this year, alongside our House Mixing Mastery course, which is, which is purely about, t about DJing house music. It's done very, very well and people love it. But I would say you do need to know your way around your DJ controller. By the way, you can do it on a DDJ 400 just fine. Uh, so the next question is from DJ Fetter who says, um, I'm looking at some entry level monitor speakers for production. Uh, any recommendations for production? Look at the Adam Audio speakers. Uh, they're good and they'll give you a nice flat frequency response. Uh, Adam Audio, they've got some reasonably well-priced ones nowadays. Um, so the next question pulled off the live ones here. I'm just looking at them now. Uh, and again, it's good to see so many of you chatting to each other and not needing me. Uh, Fagoot says, it looks like a really nice community here. Uh, I'm going back to DJing after a while. Will you be updating the buyer's guide for 2021? It's funny you should say that because I've literally been going through the proof, which is the printout with all the mistakes on it, uh, of the buyer's guide for 2021. I'd be, I, it was the first thing I did this morning. I was actually late to our end of year team meeting because I was busy going through the 2021 buyer's guide, making sure it was all correct. So yes, uh, we'll be launching that. First of January, it will be there, and the 2020 buyer's guide will be no more. By the way, if you're wondering what we're talking about, it's a guide we do every year to basically talk you through everything you need to get started in DJing. Uh, you can get it by being a member of Digital DJ Tips, which is free. Just go to djtips.co slash join, uh, and we will send you the 2021, because it's still 2020, and then on the 1st of January, we'll let you know um, a link to get the 2021 guide. Uh, all our members get that every year for free. You also get a copy of the book, by the way, if you join. So if you'd like a copy of this, I'll give you a PDF of it. Go to that link. Um, and uh, we've actually just put the book online as well. Uh, and that will be launched in the next couple of weeks. Uh, the whole, you can read our whole book online with added videos and, all, and audio and stuff that we can't do in a print book. Um, so it's all going on here at Digital DJ Tips, you know. Uh, thanks for the question. Um, Matthew says, how do you switch your camera views during your streams? Uh, I um, see you click a small peripheral to switch on occasion. We use these. See that? That's the one over in the studio. That's the one I use when I'm over there. So if I'm over here presenting, I will use this box. Uh, it's hidden kind of out of view normally. Uh, and if I want to switch over to the overhead view, I can switch over to the overhead view there. If I want to switch over to the side view, I can switch over to the side view there. Um, and so on. Uh, and the little box is called a Stream Deck, an Elgato Stream Deck. And they are um, not necessary for live streaming. You can just use keyboard shortcuts. I can do the same thing on my keyboard. So if I want to switch to another view on the keyboard, I can just press a keyboard shortcut there, back to the studio, uh, back to me. Uh, but I find I make fewer mistakes using those boxes because they have a little picture of what you're going to switch to in each key. Uh, it's called the Elgato Stream Deck. Um, um, so, uh, hit that like button, says DJ99. Yeah, we'd love you to hit that like button, please, people. It, it encourages us. But even better, hit the share button. That's the one that helps, uh, that's helps all this happen. What's happened to Mixcloud? Uh, Mixcloud's all right. We're live on Mixcloud at the moment, Graham. Uh, it's fine. Hi to everyone who's over there, actually. Hi to DJ Clyde on Mixcloud, to John Colley, who says, I'm in the UK. DJ Clyde says, again, don't push the competition too hard. I want to win it. Um, <laughs> Uh, so Mixcloud's looking all right. We've got, uh, we've got Mixcloud live. DJ Clyde also says, love the book. So helpful. Well, I'm glad to know you love the book. Uh, Mixcloud did go down for a, um, like over Sunday into Monday, I think. It probably might have been due to Google's Drive going down. I don't know. But anyway, they did go down for a bit. But as far as I know, they're back and, and all is up and running there now. If it's not, do let me know uh, and we will investigate further for you. Um, more questions. Uh, since this morning, on my tractor controller, the audio is only coming through my left earphone and not my right. Any ideas? It's not a problem with the earphones. Try plugging it in harder. It might just be that you haven't got it plugged in hard enough. Have you tried the earphones on another um, thing, like another unit, or have you tried different headphones on your tractor unit to see if that's the issue? If not, it sounds to me like you might have your audio settings wrong. If you go into the settings audio menu, you can see what you've got set for the left and right cue. Uh, and it could just be that accidentally or some way um, you've only got the left cue set to headphones and the right is set to something else. Uh, it could be something like that. Uh, go check those things and uh, see if that helps you. Apparently there's a major snowstorm in New Jersey from Charlie. It snowed in. 
uh, this Thursday. Wow, the snow's hitting east side USA, eh? Um, so, uh, good luck. Stay warm. Uh, what's your favourite genre of music, says DJ Mechanicom. I am a big fan of electronica, uh, what I would call electronica, you know, just more, very organic sounding, quite slow, um, interesting kind of house style beats. That's my favourite genre. Um, DJ Gick says, uh, do your courses cover techniques to keep the energy level up instead of playing end to beginning? I struggle to get the timing right with the phrases and all. Oh yes, yeah, certainly we do. Uh, the course you want for that is our mixing power skills course. Uh, which, which basically gets you, gets you from playing from end to beginning to playing uh, a lot more uh, interesting type DJ sets. So go head over to the DJ courses section at the top of Digital DJ Tips uh, and then go down and click on Mixing Power Skills here. And this will teach you all the big things that you need to know to cross genres and BPMs and quick mix and do all that interesting stuff that stops it, uh, stops it getting too boring and keeping the energy up. Uh, and using all the stuff on your controllers and your systems, you know, cues and slices and key mixing and um, tone play and all those things that, uh, you know, you maybe don't, don't use enough. Uh, and that's all in the Mixing Power Skills course. So go over and have, have check that one out as well. Um, DJ Mechanicom does the same thing on Spotify. Yeah, I mean, it's no secret, is it? Is it? But that's the, uh, that's the way to do it. Peter is just big up to Fast Eddie. Um, what a tune, eh? Steve's going to be featuring it in his live stream on Sunday. So if you want to hear a hip hop, to hip house holiday live stream. Hip hop to hip house holiday live stream. Try saying that after your Christmas party. Um, Steve will be doing that at 5 p.m. London, midday Eastern on Sunday, uh, doing a special a Christmas special. And that is one of the tracks, the Fast Eddie track that he's gonna be using. Um, DJ Trainwork Direct says, um, are any of the Digital DJ Tips live streamers planning a New Year's Eve set? Um, well, it's a good question. Um, and we are doing a set on the 27th which is a Sunday, I'll be doing that one. Again, 5 p.m. UK, midday Eastern. Uh, on January the 3rd, the following Sunday, Ben, our community manager, is doing his second ever set, same times. But I was thinking of going live for an extended set on New Year's Eve. It won't be at midnight for everyone, um, but I was thinking of doing that. So if I do, just check out the channels, see if uh, you get a notification on YouTube and on Facebook, and if you, don't get our notifications, it's easy to fix. Just click that subscribe button on YouTube and click the bell. And if you're on Facebook, click like on the page. Uh, and if you're on Twitch, of course, do the Twitch thing as well. But there's always a way of getting notifications to show. Um, I don't even know if you can do that on Mixcloud yet. I don't think you can. It's one of the criticisms people have of Mixcloud is that you can't yet um, get subscription um, notifications when people go live. Uh, so the next question, is from Fresh Trees Music. I love your mixes, mister. You motivate me each day. I'd love to be on the level you are someday if I could afford DJ equipment. I'll send you my mix. Put your mixes on our Friday mix, um, Friday mix area, which is on the Global DJ Network. So go there, Global DJ Network, uh, djtips.co slash global will get you there. Join the group by clicking join and we will let you in manually. It's a private group, but it is open to, to anyone. You don't have to be a customer of ours. And then every Friday, we, we give you a, a special post where you can share your mixes. So if you want to share mixes with us, that is the place to do it. Johannes says, have you got any new info on, let me just turn that off, any new info on Pioneer standalones? I'd love to have the new screens. Yeah, you mean the screens like they have here, but on new Pioneer standalones. I haven't got any info on that, but they're going to be coming, aren't they? There's no reason why not. Uh, but I'd say some point in 2021. Um, have you tried Zip DJ? This is the music pool I use. We love Zip DJ, but, uh, and yes, we have tried it. Um, yeah, it's a great DJ pool, especially for house, because they've got a lot of good differentiated differentiations among the house music, haven't they? Hi to Laurie. Good to have you here, Laurie. Uh, do you think Denon will update the Prime software for activating loops when playing a track? Uh, I'm not sure they're going to do that. I know what you mean, uh, but I haven't had any word on that. Uh, the Ruckus says the Beatport Top 10 and the Hype 10 is a great way to find good music. That's true. Um, so thank you for sharing that. Uh, Ian Dubbs is late to the party, but I have to watch the replay. So it's, you, you reminded me, if you'd like to watch a replay of this, just click replay on YouTube and Facebook afterwards, uh, especially if you're uh, just tuning in now. So uh, Lou says, Phil, what's your opinion on those devices like the Alto Professional XLR Bluetooth for speakers? Do they really work or are they worth the money? Some of those devices that will get the audio from your 
DJ gear to your speakers without cables are, are good, but make sure there's no latency on them. The DJ ones should be all right, but you've got to ask yourself, what do I need this? Because you've got to charge them up and they're never going to be as reliable as cables. You know, a lot of gimmicks, they solve problems that no one's got. You know, they, they give you an answer where there was never a question. So just ask yourself twice whether you need, you need some of this stuff. Uh, Music Unlimited says, great teacher. Well, if that means me, thank you very much, Music Unlimited. Um, Jamie says, it looks like one of those CD, CDJ screens is cracked. Let me tell you what you're looking at there. You're looking at this, aren't you, or that. That is the wire that goes from the camera above over to the production computer. And because we haven't got the screen turned on, you can see the reflection of both the light and the wire, but I promise you it isn't cracked. Uh, it's made of plastic to start with, so it'd be pretty hard to, uh, pretty hard to crack it. Um, so DJ99 is selling for us. Thank you very much, 99. It's reminding people that all our courses are for life, so keep that in mind. You can go back anytime. Yeah, our DJ courses are for life, including all future updates, so you will never be uh, left alone with a login to something that no one's in there helping you with. Uh, what's the best medium-sized controller to just use with an external hard drive? Uh, so you're looking not at controllers then, you're looking at, uh, you're looking at standalone systems. And the one I would recommend is the Prime 2, the Den and DJ Prime 2. There you go, that was easy, wasn't it? Uh, Kevin says, I've managed to catch your show live. Finally, good to have you here, Kevin. Um, what's the best way to use a DDJ200 with or without an external sound, sound card? This is a DDJ200 from Pioneer DJ. It's a great little beginner controller, but its big failing is it's got no sound card. So there's no headphone socket, there's no speaker socket anywhere on it. And you're meant to use a splitter cable, which will take the output from your phone or your iPad or your computer, and it will give you one cable that you plug into your speakers and one that you plug into your headphones. And you can have different music playing on each. And the way it does that is by doing it in mono. Basically, so instead of having a stereo output, you have two mono outputs, one for the speakers and one for your earphones. It still comes out of both speakers and about both earphones, but it's the same signal in each. It's a bit of a hack. Uh, and they give you the cable in the box with that. So you're better off using an external audio interface because you're gonna get better sound. Uh, or just buy the DDJ400, which isn't much more money and it's got an audio interface built in, problem solved. Um, Phil, is there any way I can monitor my voice on the Prime 4 during a stream, preferably without losing a channel? There's no mic monitor. There is a setting in the preferences where you can say whether or not you want the microphone to come through the booth. So you could do that. I mean, it's just gonna be mixed with the booth output then. Uh, why do you wanna monitor your voice? Just to check there's no distortion or something, Dave. Um, I'm intrigued why you wanna do that. Um, you know, I live stream on the Prime Go, which is the same as the Prime 4, as far as the technology goes. and I don't need a, a mic monitor to do that. So I'm just wondering why. Uh, but no, there isn't a, 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 a way of monitoring just the microphone on your headphones as far as I know. Uh, John Jazz, what's the best tagging software for MP3, MP4, etc.? By the way, hello, Phil. Hello to you, John. Uh, well, you use iTunes or use you know, music as it's now called. You could just use the, uh, the tagging in your DJ software. You know, most of those will, will work fine. Mixed in Key has got a built-in tag editor. If you're on Windows, you could use Media Monkeys, very good. If you're on um, Mac, you could use Amarack, I think it's called, or Amarock, uh, which is all right. There's loads of them, to be honest. Um, so they all do much the same thing. So just find one that does what you want and that you like the look of and use it. Um, yeah, there's loads of, loads of choices there. Uh, what have I missed, says Paul. Oh, we were talking about you, Paul, as well. No, you've missed 38 minutes with the questions, Paul, but you can watch the replay. Uh, Daryl says, Phil, I'm a techno DJ on YouTube. I was wondering how to get more views. Uh, I've ta tried tagging keywords and descriptions plus keeping them to an hour so people don't get bored. Any thoughts? Consistency, a great thumbnail, and answering everyone who talks to you and um, encouraging, uh, not encouraging people to click subscribe and notify because that's the only way they're gonna know if you go live. Um, go live, that's another one, go live. Now you can't go live on YouTube if you haven't got a thousand subscribers, if you use, like if you're just lamely using your phone or something, but the best way to go live on YouTube is to go live from a laptop with production software and do a good job of it, and then you can go live without uh, having a thousand subscribers. But consistency is the thing, and, and as soon as someone likes your channel, be their best friend because it all moves in from those first few subscribers and slowly moves out. Uh, and it takes time, which is why the consistency is important. Uh, the 
Mixmaster G says, I've suggested to Denon to do the looping the tractor way. I have as well. I've suggested lots to Denon, but um, they're not into the idea. Uh, obviously, or else it would have arrived, but maybe they are. Maybe they just haven't got around to it yet. Uh, having Shazam on my Apple Watch is the best thing that's happened to me. Now I can pounce on interesting music quickly and easily, says Laurie. Yeah, that's another good way, obviously, of uh, building your collection out. Having Shazam, uh, it's taken as red, isn't it? Shazam is, is, is awesome. Um, I would love to have been a fly on the wall in that end of year team meeting, says Cadence. Well, it's business, right? So we went through the last year, we went through the last quarter, we, we decided what next year is going to look like, we decided what the next quarter is going to look like, we did the numbers, um, and then, uh, yeah, we've got to have these meetings. Every company's got to have these meetings. Can I let you into a little secret? I don't really like them very much. It's just, it's just a bit corporate for me, but, um, you know, we're a well-run company and my second in command makes sure that I turn up to these things and do my bit. So there we go. Uh, DJ Fetter just says, Shazam on an Apple Watch? Amazing. <laughs> right, last five minutes here, folks. Let's just try and get as many of these done as we can. Um, since NAM is cancelled, do you know when New Gear will be announced? What will be the biggest new release for 2021? Well, New Gear will probably be announced, we were talking about this in our meeting, around the same time, so expect New Gear in January. Um, what will be announced for 2021? Well, we, we do know of bits and pieces, but we, uh, we will tell you what we can, and that is, I believe you're going to see more standalone stuff. I believe you're going to see something like this, from Pioneer DJ, with the new technology in, that they've got in these, this gear, but in a standalone controller format. Another little tip, if you wanna pre-guess what people might release, look at their current gear and put a different number on the end of it. So when the Prime 4 was released with four channels, it didn't take a genius to work out a Prime 2 might follow, right? Just look in manufacturers' ranges and look at the gaps in their numbering systems. It's a tried and tested way of spotting what might be coming. I'm just gonna leave that one with you. Uh, all right then. <laughs> uh, hi Phil. Uh, oh right, DJ, oh, this is DJ Kluby. Uh, how do you work out pricing for weddings, birthdays, etc.? Look at the pricing in your area for everyone else and decide whether you want to be high end, low end or somewhere down the middle. There's your price. Stephen says, thank you Phil for all you've done this year. Best wishes for you and your family this Christmas and New Year. Salvation John and Base. No, thanks to you for being on nearly every live stream I've done this year. Believe me, I spot every single person on our live streams, every single person, and I, I never forget a name. So thank you for being there. Um, it's been a weird year, hasn't it? But I've, I, I would say live streaming has come out of it as a good thing. Uh, it's certainly something that's got me back interested in DJing regularly because I spend so much time teaching that the DJing fell by the wayside a long time ago. Uh, so let's just do one or two more of these then. Uh, James, looking to upgrade for my DDJ400. I plan on purchasing the DDJ800, but I'm hearing the DDJ FLX6 is worth a look. Should I bother looking at the FLX6 or go straight to the 800? Right, let me talk to you about this and I will pick up the FLX or the Flex 6 in order to do it. So you want to upgrade from the uh, DDJ, I'm just trying to check which one, was it the 400? Yeah, you want to upgrade from the DDJ 400 and you're wondering whether you should go for this or you should go for the um, DDJ 800 from Pioneer DJ. This controller here is basically the DDJ 400 with big pro jog wheels, four channels, and the big knobs at the top here to do the crazy build up effects things that Pioneer DJ is championing at the moment. There's not really any other difference. They've got a few other bits and pieces, but nothing worth talking about. The build quality, the quality of the pads, the quality of the crossfader, the quality of the upfaders, the knobs, is all the same as the DDJ 400. You're getting better jog wheels and you're getting four channels. And if you're interested in those big effects knobs, you're getting those as well. I would suggest that you shouldn't buy a controller for that function, although it's a fun little thing to have. If you're upgrading from a 400, I would advise you to go for the 800 every time. It's a proper step up, a proper step up. In every way, it's superior to both the 400 and that, apart from the fact it hasn't got four channels. So if you think four channels is important to you, 
and you don't want to spend 1200 for the DDJ1000, you've got no choice but to go for the FLX6, but you're not getting a better build, you're not getting pro features, you're not getting a jump in sound quality, you're basically not moving from a consumer controller to a professional controller, which is what you would do if you went from the 400 to the 800. So my advice would be, do you want to move up a step to get something more professional, something that you could DJ out on really confidently that will last you longer, that you can give more abuse to, that sounds better, or do you want the flashy stuff they put on the FLX6, which is still built the same as the 400? I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the build, it's just that they are consumer build quality. So that should answer your question, James. Just decide which way you want to go on that. Uh, and we've run out of time. I've got to do the last question. Sorry to everyone who's had to answer, who's asked questions and I just haven't been able to get around to. Always get your questions in early, I think is the way here. Uh, we sometimes do these for an hour, but I have to go now. So we're going to have to have a 45 minute one today. Um, we'll have a bumper one when I get back in January. How about that? Uh, so um, let's just pull one more, one final one off. Uh, lots of you are talking, pull one final one off. Did I just say that? Um, lots of you giving speaker uh, speaker um, advice here with the with the um, question earlier about good monitors. Um, you, know, you do get notifications when someone goes live on Mixcloud, but it's a bit poor, says Danny. Okay, uh, Mixcloud can't be reached. It's been like this for weeks. Now it's you, it's you, Graham. There's something wrong at your end because uh, Mixcloud's fine. I've been using it today, yesterday, at the weekend. Um, so I don't know why you can't reach it, but it is fine. Try a different browser or a different computer and see if that's the issue. And then you can at least narrowing down what the issue is. Uh, Marlene says, first time watching. Uh, really enjoying it. Thanks. Oh, well, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Um, and what's your thought on Pacemaker and their new three version, including their own streaming catalogue, says Erwin. I'm going to look into that because Pacemaker was relying on Spotify, wasn't it? piece of software that relied on Spotify for its music catalogue. I don't know, I've not seen it, I'll look into it, but that won't count as the last question because I couldn't answer it. Um, this is the last question then. DJ Adrian says, do you think clubs will start using Denon gear instead of the standard Pioneer gear? No, I think you're gonna find Pioneer gear for the foreseeable future in clubs. They don't change what's not broken and there's nothing wrong with this, it's what DJs expect. I think that Denon is playing a very, very long game with its gear. The Denon gear is very popular among hobby DJs and very popular among mobile DJs where they can take what they want. Uh, and some, some pro DJs like Layback Luke and so on. But I think the chances of it, of it seriously replacing this kind of gear in pro DJ booths, very slim in the near future. In the longer future, who can tell? But in the near future, I can't see it happening. Right, we're done for this day and we're done for this year, people. Thank you so much, everyone who's tuned in to the 51 Thursday Q&A lives. No, that's not actually true. If you, if you remember, Thursday Q&A started as a Friday session in lockdown because DJs weren't DJing on Friday nights. And we said, oh, let's just go live and chat DJing together. Yeah, and then lockdown ended in some places and we moved it to a Thursday. And that's how we got the Tuesday and Thursday shows. And it's stuck, even though a lot of us are locked down any, uh, again now. Uh, so, you know, we must have done a good 30 or 40 of them this year. It's been, it's been brilliant to present them for you. I hope I've helped a lot of DJs over that time with questions and stuff. Sorry, I can't get around to all your questions, but whatever platform you're on, uh, as long as the questions remain underneath the video, my team will try and get to you and answer your questions. Uh, that's it, we're done. Get good, stay safe people, make the moments. Uh, thank you to everyone saying, uh, you know, thanks in the comments, I do appreciate it. Hit the share button while you still can, hit the like button. Uh, and I will be back for one more Tuesday Tips Live next Tuesday, and then that's it for 2020 for, for us. Uh, and we'll see you on the other side. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, have a lovely holiday session if I don't see you next Tuesday and uh, take care folks. Until next time, bye-bye.